All right, so we're going to look at the impact of stress, anxiety, and arousal on sports performance. And this is assignment two. So here's the criteria here. You have to describe arousal and its effects on sports performance, describe stress and anxiety and their symptoms and causes, explain arousal and its effects on sports performance, and then finally analyze arousal for your distinction criteria and its effects on sports performance. So I'm going to walk you through this now. Okay, so the first thing, you can read your scenario, which gives you the setting. But the task here itself, I'll explain how to tackle it. So the first thing you're going to do is you will look at what is stress. So use it as a subheading and then define what stress is. Then you'll look at the types of stress, eustress and distress. So you'll say eustress is this, distress is this, and provide examples that relate to both of them. Then you look at the causes of stress, which are here. Okay, so describe internal causes and give some examples. The same with external, personal, occupational and sports environments. Really important you describe them and provide examples. Symptoms of stress. Um, so look at cognitive. Cognitive to do with the mind. Somatic to do with your physiological or your perception of your physiological changes and then behaviour or how your behaviour changes because of stress. Maybe you become short-tempered and, um, and irrational. Okay. And how, how does that, why does that happen? All right, next, you then have to um, describe the effects on sports performance, describe the effects of stress on sports performance. So look at the nervous system responses, so sympathetic and parasympathetic, why do they happen? How does that relate to sports performance? Consider um, your neg negative mental state and how that affects performance. And also consider how loss of confidence and concentration in relation to stress uh, impact sports performance. Then I want you to look at anxiety. First of all, I want you to look at what is anxiety and um, give a definition of what anxiety is. The next part, I want you to look at types of anxiety. So to look at what state anxiety is and what trait anxiety is. Then the causes of anxiety. So what causes anxiety, what causes individuals or sports performers to become anxious and give examples of those and look at the negative effects. Then we look at the symptoms of anxiety, which we've covered in, in lesson. Cognitive, to do with the mind, the worry, the concentration. Somatic, to do with the, uh, the perception of the physiological changes in your body, such as your heart race, and you'll become aware of it and it increases. Also, discuss and describe the behavioural changes of the athlete when they become anxious. So why does an athlete become uh, behaviour change because they become anxious? And what, what behavioural changes potentially happen? Then, finally, I want you to talk about the effects of anxiety on performance. So it's a negative mental state. How does that affect performance? How does a loss of confidence affect performance? And how does decreased expectations of success affect performance? Finally, how, how does an athlete's fear of failure affect performance? What I, want to do, what I want you to do throughout is to link sports examples where you can to demonstrate your understanding of each of these elements here in the bullet points. Task two. Task two is focused around arousal. Um, so the first thing, this is for your pass, is what is arousal, so define it. And then it wants you to describe the theories of arousal. Okay, so um, there are four theories of arousal. There's drive, inverted U, catastrophe, and individual zones of optimum functioning. It wants you to describe each of them and what those theories are about. Um, and then it wants you to explain the effects arousal has on sports performance. So here it says it wants to wants you to talk about improvements and decreasements in in uh, in performance levels. So how arousal has an impact on improvements in performance, but also how it has an uh, um, an effect on um, performance levels lowering because arousal levels too high or too low. Also talk about how arousal changes in attention focus. Talk about how arousal um, increases. Um, anxiety levels and potentially causes choking. Finally, it wants you to, or not finally, but it wants you to look at the flaws of the theory. So if you look at the drive theory, it says as arousal increases, performance increases, which is not necessarily true. As we discussed in lesson, we talked about actually sometimes arousal gets to a point where it doesn't improve performance. It could potentially, um, performance could decline because arousal levels are too high. Then I want you to match arousal theories to a sports specific example and explain how they link back to these theories, the, the examples. So, for example, Stephen Gerrard getting sent off, why does that relate to the catastrophe theory? 
And finally, you've got to analyze how arousal affects sports performance. So look at how arousal has positive and negative impacts on sports performance. Again, link them sports specific examples in, be really detailed in how, you, how you're putting it together. Maybe consider putting references in. Why some athletes struggle to recover from a drop in, in their sports performance because <clears throat> and, and relate back to arousal levels. So if their performance, if their arousal levels drops, why does their performance struggle to get back to its original position? Um, why finding the optimum zone is really important for athletes and the impact this has on performance. Okay, so why is the optimum zone really, really important for an athlete? And throughout, I want you to uh, relate your analysis back to theories. So link what you're saying back to the four theories that we've covered. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Um, I will now upload this to YouTube.